Hi, Kinesiology 1018. Um, this week we're going to go through Chapter 15 on environmental health. Um, today we're going to talk about population growth. We'll talk about some of the effects of pollution in our air, our water, our land. Um, and also talk about some other pollution and how we can really take steps to improve the quality of our environment. Okay, So why do we need to talk about this? Um, so originally, or well, I guess now a little bit right now, um, our goal was to really control communicable diseases or infectious diseases. Um, and then after we were able to really control most of them, right now we're dealing with a major um, communicable or infectious disease, um, COVID-19, um, and which causes major issues because we can't control as much of those infectious diseases until we develop vaccines and preventative measures. Okay. Um, right now, as, as the health profile changes, these infectious diseases are also affecting those who already have chronic disease or other health problems like cardiovascular disease. So these are kind of linking together what we have, um, something kind of a major issue in the past and now a major issue now, and they're combining and we're seeing those real major effects of chronic diseases interacting with infectious diseases. Okay. With rapid population growth recently, this has made a huge impact on our environment. And okay. the world's population is now, this is older statistics, is closer to 7.7 .7 billion now. Um, and it's increasing at a rate of 75 million people per year. And we're having more in that older age bracket, okay, with, with less individuals dying earlier on in life. We're seeing a steady growth in population throughout all age groups, especially in those more developing areas. We're seeing much more rapid growth in the younger population. Um, but in more developed countries, we're seeing a higher population in those over the age of 60 compared to those that are maybe younger under the age of 15 and 20. Okay, some of the factors towards this population growth, um, there are high birth rates okay, with, with better living arrangements, better um, socioeconomic factors when it comes to more developed countries. There's higher birth rates um, in those lower, or less developed countries. We have a lack of um, family planning and lower death rates overall. Okay, less people are dying and there are still high birth rates, which means we're going to have more people on this planet. I mean, we don't really know how many people this world can hold, but, but there is kind of this large consensus that there has to be some limit to our resources on this earth and the people that are there. Um, some of the primary things we need to pay attention to are food, available land and water, energy and, and having a minimal standard of living. So how many people can we hold and still feed, have houses, have water, have energy, and have a, an acceptable standard of living? Um, that's going to kind of really put the cap onto how many people we can really have on this world. So let's talk about pollution, especially when it comes to air pollution. Okay, air pollution is not new. We've had it from many other byproducts from other activities, but human byproducts are kind of accelerating the total pollution. Okay, so this air pollution is not just negative for global health, but especially for individuals who are compromised, like young children and older adults, maybe more vulnerable to secondary conditions from these pollutions. How we really pay attention to this pollution is through our air quality index. Here in Bakersfield, we really need to pay attention to this. And that air quality index, you'll probably see it on your phone when you go through the weather app or you'll see it on the news. Um, we want to stay in this moderate to good zone. Um, in cases where our AQI or air quality index is above 100, it becomes unhealthy for sensitive groups and up into unhealthy, very unhealthy and hazardous. Okay, if we're under this 100 zone, we're probably good for our, our general air. Um, if you're of a more sensitive group like those with asthma, those with secondary respiratory conditions, you maybe don't want to exercise or be very physically active um, once the AQI is above 100. Um, this AQI is made up of carbon monoxide numbers, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, particulate matter, and ground level ozone. These are the factors of pollution that come into our air quality index. Okay, so we're paying attention to this because as air pollution begins to expand, it also causes you know, changes within our climate. Um, our climate is constantly changing, but with human activity, it's accelerating and changing these, the climate in a, in a different way than what was used to, or uh, kind of the natural progression. 
So this is causing an increase in rainfall and also an increase in drought, depending on the area. Um, some higher heat stress, um, different poleward shifts where, where we're really changing where things are growing, how much rain is falling, how, where, and how things can grow and develop in regions that were maybe more stable or now a little bit less stable. Okay, so it really is just changing ecosystems, maybe causing melting in some areas and even higher heat or higher rainfall in others. Okay, this thinning of the ozone layer, the ozone layer is this layer um, within our atmosphere that helps to repel ultraviolet rays um, or hazard, those hazardous rays we talked about in our cancer section. Um, when we have a destruction or a disruption of this layer, we're getting higher levels of UV rays in different areas of the world. As these UV rays go up, heat goes up with it. Okay, um, We're seeing major holes, or we saw major holes in these Arctic zones, which is causing more of those melting phenomena in those areas. Um, but we're starting to see kind of a, a return to normal um, or less ozone depletion um, as we start to alter our environmental habits. Okay. So how does energy use play a role into this energy um, from Americans is, is the second most energy consumption country in the world. China is the first. This energy consumption can cause major issues, especially if we're using non-renewable polluting resources. Um, renewable resources are, are resources like sun, wind, um, geothermal, tide, any of these possible um, renewable resources where it's not causing secondary pollution. Most of our energy does come from polluting sources like burning specific types of fuels. Um, so we're constantly trying to find new ways to use fuel and to make it a little bit more environmentally friendly. Um, if your vehicle can use alternative fuels, it may be a good benefit that you can do for your environment to use those alternative fuels. I would say if your car is not made for alternative fuels, do not use them. You will damage your vehicle, you'll damage uh, your own, um, and it may, it may cause other issues. So stick to what the manufacturers provide and then if they can, maybe purchase a vehicle that is, is more energy efficient um, or something that's maybe like an all electric or a hybrid where you're using less fuel, burning less fuel um, for the same amount of distance that you're normally covering. Okay. With these pollutions, we're, not, we're talking mostly environmental pollution. There's also indoor air pollution, um, something you don't want to think about. You want to think that your air inside your house is nice and clean, um, but there's other things like smoke, carbon monoxide, um, different chemicals, and then also biological pollutants like bacteria, animal dander, mold, fungi. Um, these all can go into our environment, our, our home environment, our indoor environment, and cause negative consequences on our health, like different molds, different bacteria, animal dander may cause allergies, things like that, where it's really impacting our quality of life within our home. So how can we reduce this air pollution? cut back on driving your car and make sure it's well maintained. Um, so keep up to date with your oil changes and your regular maintenance. Buy efficient appliances and lighting whenever you can. They often last a little bit longer and they're more efficient and it saves you money on your electric bill. Okay, um, make sure your home is well insulated so that you are not losing too much of that energy you're using. Um, insulate, insulated shades and curtains and the, when it's hot, or when it's cold can keep your temperature stable and you're not using too much maybe of your air conditioning or your heater um, to manipulate the temperature within your home. Um, plant trees in your neighborhood or your yard and then keep your house ventilated and, and get some plants um, so that you can continually ventilate within your home. Um, one of the ones that I want, really want to pay attention to here, you uh, should use that venting hood when you're cooking. Don't leave it off, turn it on. It can help get all of those pollutants from you cooking out of your home. Okay, other things like paints and cleaning agents, keep them sealed and often keep them in a, in a safe place where they're not going to expel their chemicals within your home. Um, if you do smoke or you have others who smoke in your home, make sure that you are, um, keep it out of maybe your room or keep it out of the house, maybe um, do so outside to help keep the air within the home less polluted. Um, and clean your appliances and your chimney, your furnace regularly. 
so that you're not backtracking all of those pollutants you're trying to get out. Okay, also, whenever you're painting, use um, low or no VOCs or volatile organic chemicals. These are those chemicals that can cause pollution within your environment. Um, keep your bathroom or roof or basement uh, mold free by maintaining leaks and maintaining the humidity within. Um, turn on the fan when you take a shower so that it doesn't all steam up and maintain and, and keep all that moisture in that room. It can lead to some mold buildup. Um, and then also use a HEPA air filter when you're um, working with the filters within your home. Um, these are the uh, highest quality air filters is the most recommended. And I do recommend, especially um, here in Bakersfield, changing those air filters at least every six months, maybe a little bit more frequently, depending on how often you use uh, maybe your air conditioner or your heater. But at least two times a year, switch the filter out, clean that area out, because if it's getting stuck inside and you're not filtering it out, um, it's going to stay within your home. Okay. Now we're going to transfer over into water pollution, look a little bit about water. Um, most of our water comes from groundwater, um, and that water comes from things like rain and then also is processed um, in different water supply areas um, and get some chemical processes, some physical processes to disinfect and then to fluorinate um, that water for human consumption. Water contamination or, or lower quality of water can cause negative impacts on our health. Um, it's estimated that every year about 1 million Americans come ill um, and some even die from illnesses related to um, poor water or unfiltered water, or contaminated water. We also have water shortages or times when there's less water. We had a drought recently a few years back. And we know that about less than 1% of the world's fresh water is accessible for human use, which means there's a lot of water on earth, but there's not a lot that we can use. Um, and then groundwater is pumped from um, aquifers, from lakes, rivers, and filtered to be available for the community. But if we have less rain or we have maybe some environmental changes that are leading to less available water, we now have a shortage and we don't have enough to they accommodate all of the people that we're, we're trying to provide this for. Okay. And we also have this risk of contracting diseases um, through um, water that is unfiltered or with sewage water where we're using that water to get rid of waste. Um, we, now that we have kind of indoor plumbing, it does help to get rid of most of those chance of disease or contracting those disease from contact with things like feces or other waste. Um, but all of this water does have to go through sewage treatment, make sure there's no heavy metals, no sludge, so that it can be repurposed for human consumption. But these costs are immense and it does, it does cost a lot of money, if you, you know probably if you have to pay a water bill, it, it does cost you money to have that running water, have that clean water. So how do we protect that water supply? Um, take showers, not baths, so that we can minimize some water consumption. Install some aerators or water efficient shower heads or faucets if you can, that maybe use a little less water every time you turn it on. It's some, something small that can help us protect that water. Okay? And also maybe you um, change devices like your toilet so that you use less water each flush. Um, more water efficient appliances, water efficient faucets, showers can help us reduce the total water usage, which means that we're going to save that water supply. And if you have a leaky faucet, you'd be surprised at how much a leaky faucet can waste water, expend water that we could be using. Um, don't pour toxic, toxic things like bleach or motor, motor oil down the drain. That's not where it should go. It's going to take a lot more processing to make that water consumable again. And then it's just going to continue the cost on our system to supply that water. And then don't pour old medicines down the drain, flush them down the toilet. We still have to process those. That water does come back to us, so we want to keep it as clean as we can. Um, now we'll transfer into solid waste or talk about you know, land pollution. Um, we generate millions and millions of tons of trash every year. Um, and all of this trash, about only 35% of it um, can be recycled or is composted every year. Okay? Some ways that we can maybe manage this, we try to burn 
um, as opposed to burial, but we know that burning materials can lead to pollution in the air. Um, and then we, we really try to just want to reduce the bulk of our waste packages, plastics, things that can be recycled, um, recycle as much as you can. And if you have to throw something away or maybe purchase things that are maybe uh, less dangerous or less likely to be dumped. Um, most of the time we are burying landfill or burying food or burying uh, wastes, solid waste in landfills. Um, but there are many disadvantages if we have, we have lack of space or if it rains through that landfill, we can have some seeking of chemicals into the groundwater, which um, can lead to water pollution. Um, but it's, it's best if we can purchase and utilize uh, different materials that are biodegradable or substances that can be decomposed by living organisms so that it's breaking down and put back into the environment. Okay, so if we have raw materials, things that can be broken down quickly rather than things that take longer to be broken down, we save some space when it comes to those landfills. We can also do things like recycling. Um, you can purchase recycled materials or recycle as often as you can. We really want to try to recycle whenever possible because if something can be reused or repurposed, it's better to repurpose it than to have it just go and sit in a landfill. We're, we're thinking long term here, not just, oh, I don't want this, I need to throw it away. Maybe it's just holding on to it until you get home so you can put it in the recycle bin. Okay. Um, take small steps to maybe improve that total recyclage because if we can repurpose those, um, those different products, and then those products maybe would be repurposed multiple times if they can. We're limiting the amount of products that are put into landfills and causing us ground waste or if it's put placed in, in uh, water like in the ocean in that large garbage patch um, out in the middle of the ocean. And we want to limit this um, solid waste pollution as much as we can. When it comes to e-waste, um, all of your electronics, you don't want to just throw them away. You want to take them to uh, a recycler because they can be very valuable. You, you may even get some money for recycling some of those materials um, because most of them can be reused. We don't want them sitting in our landfills. Okay, so, so things that you should do, things that you can do, uh, reduce your consumption. If you, if you don't need something with a package or if you can reuse things, um, Recycle them as much as you can, throw away things as, as least as you can, and just try to monitor, pay attention, be aware of your solid um, consumption, things that you're using. Um, are you using more biodegradable? Are you using more recyclable? Are you actually taking them to places where they can be recycled? Um, taking the extra steps can, can benefit our environment. Okay, I recommend buy products with less packaging. Okay, buy, buy recycled or recyclable products. Uh, buying recycled is helping feed the market of recycled products, which means more people are going to start making more recycled products, and it's going to benefit our environment. Okay, bring your own re reusable cups, okay, your reusable water bottles, forks, spoons, um, as often as you can, and store food in more recyclable containers. I recommend glass. Um, rather than something like tinfoil and, and plastic wrap. Um, I recommend glass or plastic. Um, glass lasts a lot longer, um, so I do recommend glass. Um, recycle your newspapers, your cans, your papers. Just put them in the recycle bin if you have one. Take them somewhere where they can be recycled. Sometimes you do get money, especially for those cans. Cans give you a lot more um, compared to some other products. Um, and then maybe start a compost pile if you can, where you're putting your organic matter. You can use this or take it to a composting center. You can use this to help um, build your garden or um, wherever you're planting and maybe your vegetables if you're starting to build your own garden. And when we're talking about um, different chemicals, hazardous chemicals, there's always going to be chemical pollution. We're, we're really trying to keep those out but with things like pesticides, herbicides, um, some of those solvents that we use as cleaning products. Um, they can be very dangerous if they're left out into our environment. Other things like asbestos. Um, asbestos is often in older homes. It was used as an inf insulation, but it is linked um, to lung cancers and lung diseases. So if you're buying an older home, get it checked for asbestos. Make sure it's asbestos-free. Um, you don't want to be knocking down a wall and then 
breathe in something that you don't want to breathe in. With lead, um, lead poisoning has gone down, but if you have an older home, again, uh, make sure that you have lead-free paints and then make sure that uh, you're keeping up and making sure that everything is the way that it should be. If you're using an older home or you're living in an older home, make sure that they use lead-free paint or repaint if you can. Other pesticides um, and herbicides that are kind of helping us produce more crops so we can feed more people are also having negative consequences because as we or give these poisons to the insects, give these poisons to the birds, um, and then if we eat some other animal that consumes those insects or consumes those birds, we're consuming those also toxic agents or they're getting into the ground, getting into our groundwater. Uh, buying organic may be a, a better way because organic foods often have less pesticides. Um, with mercury poisoning, we're, we're not seeing as much, but if we um, are eating high levels of um, predatory fish, um, or high levels of fish in general, you may have a higher risk of mercury poisoning and then other chemical pollutants. Um, pay attention to how they say to be disposed, things like batteries, light bulbs. Um, if it says that it should be recycled or given to a certain landfill or taken somewhere, do so. Don't, don't just take the easy way out and throw it in the trash can. Uh, handle it the way that it should. Um, and then to help prevent some of these chemical pollution, when you're using cleaners, choose the less toxic ones, read the labels, do your due diligence, and, and find out a little bit more. Dispose of those hazardous wastes the way that they should, the way that the instructions say so. And buy organic produce whenever you can, especially locally grown because then it's not shipped from somewhere else. Less air pollution also. Um, if you're using pesticides, make sure that you store them away from children or pets that can get to them that could cause negative consequences for those individuals like your, like your children or your pets or someone who is not reading those labels. If you're using any kind of pest control, make sure that you're using the right equipment and a licensed exterminator and, and understand what they're putting around your environment because you may be breathing that in. Um, finally, some things we'll talk about radiation pollution. If you're around ultraviolet rays, microwaves, um, or other maybe nuclear or something like that, you, you do have a risk of developing things like cancers from these radiation. Um, so pay attention to what you're around, understand the risks in maybe your occupation. Um, nuclear weapons or nuclear power um, could lead to problems, especially if we had that large um, nuclear spill um, in Japan a few years ago. It, that area is now unsafe to be because of that radiation can cause changes to your DNA, changes to your tissue, and lead to things like cancers. Um, when it comes to radiation at your home, um, there are some thoughts that things like your microwave or your phone or different power lines or computers could be sending off different radiation. It's not known for sure um, if they are causing any negative consequences on us or polluting us with radiation pollution. Um, but if we can limit those, um, don't stand in front of the microwave while you're making your hot pocket, um, or maybe keep your phone away from you while you're sleeping or keep it away from you um, while you're moving around, um, maybe good ideas for you. All right, um, that's it for our last lecture in Kinesiology 1018 on environmental health. Um, good luck on your final. Um, Always schedule in office hours if you need any extra help. Um, but thanks for watching, and thank you for a great semester.